CBS News political editor Steve Chigaris and CBSN political contributor Leslie Sanchez join me now from Greenville, South Carolina to talk about all this. So first, guys, the news right now is that former President George W. Bush will join his brother Jeb in South Carolina starting next week to campaign there. And for our viewers who may not remember, uh, President Bush won the South Carolina primary back in 2000. That's right, but 2000 is not 2016, and so, and Jeb Bush is not George W. Bush, as we've seen, so it's a much different game now. I think Jeb is, uh, is hoping that uh, his brother's presence will uh, at least push the momentum forward that, that he got with his fourth place finish in New Hampshire, but there's no guarantee of that. This is a completely different race now than, than George Bush was facing in 2000, and frankly, it's a completely different electorate. I think Republicans are in a different mindset now than they were in 2000. Now, it, I definitely, you know, the Bush family has used South Carolina as a firewall going back to the father. It's definitely been the place because of the number of military retirees. The chain, you know, it's, it's always been a safe place for them to regain their footing and regain support. But very much like we're talking about, the demographic has changed and the attitudes, especially among young, I think, social conservatives and Tea Partiers, is definitely different. All right, so you guys just heard uh, Governor Kasich hitting back on uh, Jeb. What does he have to do in South Carolina to keep the momentum going from New Hampshire? Does he have a chance there? Um, I, that's a very good question. And uh, I, ha I have to say, looking at his strategy, they just announced his schedule next week. It's very interesting. He's going to be out of the state for three days next week. He's going to Michigan on Monday and Tuesday. Then he goes to Virginia uh, and New York City to raise some money on Wednesday. So. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at his schedule, I, I think Kasich may be telegraphing that he doesn't think he has a huge chance here. I mean, I think what he needs to do is not get clobbered here. Uh, maybe show that he has a little bit of momentum here. But this isn't really compatible with the kind uh, of message that Kasich is putting out there. He's been, he basically went all in in New Hampshire as a moderate. Uh, and this is not a moderate state in what, whatsoever. I think seeing him go to Michigan and Virginia is telegraphing that he's looking further ahead um, to, uh, to uh, later voting states, Super Tuesday and Michigan's uh, after that, and, and places that might be more compatible with what he's saying. Leslie. Yeah, definitely, I'd agree that he has to come out alive. You know, no, please, you, you, you know, the funny part he says is there was no crying. It sounds like a country western song. <laughs> I'm from Texas, and we hear these kinds of things. He's, he's planning ahead. I agree with that part. But this is a vicious state when it comes to dirty politics and getting out of Republican primaries, Republican and Democrat for that matter. Uh, they play very hard ball here. And I think he's basically saying, let me stay under the current so that I can live another day. Great making for a country song. I don't know if it's going to make for a long campaign. Well, now let's talk about Donald Trump. The target is now back on him. How do you guys expect him to do in South Carolina, where the electorate is much closer to what it was in Iowa? And thus, that's why we saw that Ted Cruz win there. You know, looking at Donald Trump, I tell you, talking to a lot of, uh, you know, the establishment Republicans, this is what they're seeing as their last shot to slow that momentum. The, the message that's going around to a lot of the party leaders is if we do not coalesce around one establishment-oriented candidate, it's really going to be this kind of Pat Buchanan-esque 30, 34 percentile candidate who moves forward and you have 60 plus percent of the Republican Party who does not support him. So it's making for a very uh, serious dynamic. I think as, as the party leaders are trying to figure out who will the, the nominee be, but there's still going to be a lot of money, dollars, and frustration uh, between now and then. And, and what you're seeing is you're seeing Trump actually tell voters here, if you if you let me, if you make me win South Carolina, we're rolling to the nomination. He said that, and so uh, and, and there's probably some truth to that. And so there's some fear, like you said, among uh, establishment Republican types that they got to get behind uh, Bush. Kasich and Rubio, who are all beating each other up for that sort of alternative to Trump versus Cruz. So you're going to see them hitting tr uh, Trump. You heard Rubio earlier today uh, hitting him on, on, on uh, the language that he's used. That is obviously a play to the evangelical voters here, the large uh, block of evangelical voters here. But Rubio's been going after him, too, on experience. And I think you're seeing Bush talk about uh, Trump not being ready to be president and having no experience as well. And so they're really, you know, the knives are going to come out for Trump here. 
Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what effect it has because as we've seen in the past, uh, other than Cruz, anybody who's really gone after Trump directly uh, hasn't fared so well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Jeb Bush is a great example of that. You, you know, certainly. And you see Governor Bush talking about, I can take him on, at least in his direct mail pieces. I've been the one who's standing toe to toe with, against Donald Trump. I think the other thing you're seeing in a lot of direct mail, because people's uh, not only email boxes are full, but their mailboxes are full, is you have uh, kind of the new modern version of evangelicals in this state who are saying it's time to coalesce and let's do it around Ted Cruz because he looks like the one who can win. We all like Marco Rubio. We like his policies. But if we had to be betting men and women, let's go this way. And that is another big divide I think you're going to start to see, especially play out in the debate. Well, so speaking of Senator Rubio, we saw him admit to his poor debate performance in his speech uh, after the New Hampshire primary where he finished fifth there. So do these debates matter? I mean, we have ours this weekend. What does Rubio have to do on Saturday in the CBS News GOP debate to turn this story around? I mean, uh, you know, debates do matter when you make a mistake uh, at the at the the grandiose type of mistake that, that Rubio did, and think something that people have been talking about for days. And then it obviously trickled down to the voters in, in, in New Hampshire. So yes, they matter when you do something like that. Remember uh, Rick Perry's oops moment. That was a, you know, he was already going down, but at that point that sort of solidified the, the, uh, uh, the idea that Rick Perry didn't know what he was really talking about. And so, yes, they do matter. And so now Rubio has to, has to, um, uh, talk to re the Republican establishment and get basically rebuild the confidence, uh, um, rebuild confidence uh, uh, in himself that he can actually be, he's actually ready to be president, uh, that he can actually do this job. And so he's going to be, I think, a lot more aggressive. Uh, I think he's probably going to probably use fewer talking points. Um, but he really needs to uh, restore that confidence because I think there was a lot of confidence lost after his performance uh, at the debate last week and after, his, uh, after the results in New Hampshire last week. You know, I, I, the only kind of adding to that is I really do think this is a kind of environment that works very well for Senator Marco Rubio. More of a southern state. It's certainly more uh, somebody who's going to be looking at interests like the culture war. The culture war plays very big here, which is why you were hearing some of those messages. And it's a really nice sweet spot for somebody like Marco Rubio to, to play that contrast with Donald Trump, but to show how dynamic, young, aspirational he really thinks he, you know, that this country, the, the kind of message this country wants to hear. You know, before I let you guys go, that you made, you made a really interesting point there, Leslie, the culture wars in South Carolina. I was surprised to hear Marco Rubio talking about the messages coming out of the entertainment industry. Is that still something, let me ask you, Leslie, as a Republican quickly, and then Steve, is that something that still resonates with people in the South? Absolutely. This is something that goes on. It's everything from Common Core, the types of things that are taught uh, in our classrooms, to the types of messages that young uh, girls and boys see on television, and it's certainly the type of language they hear every day. It's very front and center to a lot of families of faith, um, and, and it's, never, it's not going to end not anytime soon. And keep in mind, in 2012, more people, uh, more Republicans uh, in South Carolina said that they were evangelical uh, in the primary uh, that year than they did in, in Iowa. It's over 60 percent. And so there's a significant uh, group of, uh, of Republican voters here uh, who are going to be listening to those kinds of messages. All right. Steve Chigaris and Leslie Sanchez, thank you very, very uh, much, both of you. Appreciate it. I see there's a pool table back there. Maybe there's a metaphor there for what's happening in this race. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.